Robert for Fiddleback Forge on Fiddleback Friday. This one's for October the 11th, 2019. We've got a lot of new models again, uh, some of which you saw in the past couple of weeks. Those are uh, what I'm calling new models as well, but there are some new new models on top of that that you have not seen yet. Uh, you may have caught a glimpse if you happen to follow us on Instagram or one of those channels. Uh, here's a few of them uh, that we got. Uh, that you're really going to like. I'm going to show you what they look like in hand, talk about each model a little bit. Um, it's been a kind of a busy, crazy couple of weeks uh, here at Fiddleback Forge, so I haven't had a chance to talk to Andy specifically about some of these models in great detail, um, but I have been able to talk to him enough to get a little background of, uh, about some of the features and and the way that he's going with the designs and that kind of thing. So uh, we may do something in the in the near future uh, to get Andy talking about some of the new models that we did a couple of weeks ago. Um, just wasn't able to do it this week because we've got too much going on. It's just too busy at the shop. So I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, with those knives and show you the newest of the models first and tell you a little bit about them as we go. So first up, this is a knife that everybody has been asking Andy to do for years. The Fiddleback Forge F2 is a very popular model that we have. This is not it, but it's a very popular model that we have for, for breaking down, uh, you know, small fish and small game. Um, so everybody's always asking, Andy, will you make a fillet knife? Will you make a fillet knife? Well, here's the fillet knife. He has finally made one. Uh, it is obviously his take on what he wants in a fillet knife. Um, so it's not super duper flexible like you see in a lot of fillet knives. There's a very stout tip on it uh, for a fillet knife that's super well balanced, uh, as you'll see here in just a moment. Um, a lot of handle for a lot of grip. The indexing on there is great. The balance point's right at that second set of pins, as you see. Um, so it's just really great. It's not tip heavy. It's not too handle heavy. Uh, it's balanced as you would expect a Fiddleback Forge knife to be. Um, obviously, a long, lean blade on there. Uh, to really get in those those cavities and get your fillets off those fish. Um, just a fantastic addition to the Fiddleback Forge line. I think this is going to be a super popular knife, especially because of how much we've been asked about it, about making one. Uh, so this is a uh, Bacote is the wood on that, black liners with uh, yellow pinstripes on there. Uh, I believe it's 8th inch A2. Um, there's a lot of knives this week, so bear with me when I go to do the specs because I'm having to scroll to find uh, the exact knife. Uh, yeah, so it's an 8th inch A2 uh, taper tang, as you can see there. Uh, the blade on here is a 5 inch blade, so uh, plenty of blade length for what you need to do. Uh, 9.5 inches overall, so that gives you a really full 4.5 inch. Uh, on the handle and really great indexing, really great finger guard there. So when your hands get slick and slippery, uh, you're going to keep your grip and keep your grip where it's supposed to be. So that's the new Fiddleback Forge fillet knife. I hope you love it. I know we do. We're looking forward to seeing a lot more of those come out of the shop. Uh, next up, another new model as well. Uh, we're calling this one the Buffalo Bill. Uh, it's got a lot of belly to it, uh, which is going to make it great for skinning. Um, it's very much a hunting type design. Uh, if you're familiar with the, the KPH model that we've got, Kismet Practical Hunter as the full name, uh, this one's a little bit reminiscent in that. Um, it's very wildly different in blade shape and the, and the handle shape is not as wide or tall. Um, but it's got kind of that squared off shape uh, back from that, you know, the 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 guard, the swell down there on the bottom down to the pommel, it's, it's a very squared off shape compared to a lot of the Fiddleback Forge knives, um, but it's got a, a really nice indexing right there. So um, very good hunting knife, in my opinion. It's also going to be a great bush, bushcraft knife as well, obviously. With that real full belly right there toward the tip uh, is going to make it really great for, for skinning. Um, so it's going to be just an absolute great all-around field knife. Um, that new indexing that Andy's doing on some of these knives um, is just phenomenal. You get a lot of control uh, with your ring finger and your pinky, uh, which some of you may not know is actually where most of your grip strength is. So by keeping that part that part a little bit, you know, thicker, uh, it gives you a lot better grip on the handle as well. So this one's that cross cut micarta that you're seeing coming out of the shop a lot lately. Um, we love it. 
and it's pretty awesome. No, what, Allison? YouTube. Yeah. Sorry, that was Allison confirming that we are uh, live. Thanks, Allison. Um, so let me get back to where I was. Um, so uh, if I didn't already say, this is the Buffalo Bill, is what we're calling this model. Uh, Crosscut canvas micarta, black liners, orange pinstripes. Uh, it's got a four inch blade, eight and a half inch overall, eighth inch A2 on this particular one, taper tang on this particular one. Um, I think this is going to be a fantastic model. Um, it's going to go great on a belt sheath. Um, it probably would be okay in a pocket sheath as well if you don't mind a little bit larger of a knife uh, in your pocket. Uh, this would probably be the upper limits of what I would say go for in a pocket sheath personally. Now there's guys out there that carry a lot bigger than that in their pocket. So, um, But a fantastic overall knife. I think this is going to be a, a, a big winner. Um, for the, for the people that have it, especially the hunters out there coming in the hunting season. It's going to be fantastic. So this one is another new model. Um, now you can kind of tell by the upswept design, it's a very different handle shape uh, than what Andy traditionally does. I think the only one I can think of off the top of my head that's similar to this in shape would probably be the Forager um, with, a, with just kind of an upswept. Where the, where the bottom of the handle is very open. Uh, one of the great things about having that open handle on the bottom, um, it, it doesn't actually dictate to you where your fingers lie. So if you've got small hands, if you've got large hands, if you've got medium hands, no matter what size hands you have, it's going to feel like this knife was made to fit you um, because you're not locked into anything in particular uh, except for that indexing right there which is good because having that reverse on that, it's, it's almost like a, a reverse of some of the handles that Andy has done in the past, but having that index right there tells you right where that front finger always is. If you're using a reverse grip, obviously it's where your thumb goes, um, but you always know where it is. So even though it's a very open design on the grip, you never lose track of where that blade is, which is the most important part, um, obviously, of, of handling a knife. So uh, this one in particular, because this kind of arcing handle to blade design uh, kind of reminds us of the, the Quaiken style knives. Uh, some may, may say Quaiken, but I actually looked it up. It's Quaiken. But, um, but it may actually remind you of that Japanese style uh, there. So you, you may have actually seen that same kind of shape in... Um, um, not the samurai swords, but the smaller ones, um, the smaller designs of that. So it's a very Japanese looking shape, but uh, the blade that Andy put on there is very Nesmuk like uh, as far as a traditional, in a traditional sense. So uh, very un Japanese like blade on a Japanese like design as far as following that back arc. Um, so these have Japanese inspired names. This one is going to be the Emperor and the Emperor that you see here is in wingy and it's uh, natural uh, with orange pinstripes as you can see there. Uh, taper tang on this I believe it is 8th inch A2 but I'll double check for you right now and by the way you can always go to our website we post up uh, a blog post every Friday uh, before the knives come out with photos of each one of these knives with all the specs. So if you want to know specs, pricing, everything else, uh, go to the site under news and events and you'll be able to see it there. Um, so that is 8th inch A2 on that. Now these have a 4 inch blade, 8 and a half, half inch overall. So it's a good full size bushcraft knife. These are bushcraft knives. I can tell you by having an upswept blade design like that, uh, it's going to be extra good for, for slicing action. Um, also, if you like to do feather sticks where you bend, uh, where you normally tilt the blade uh, a little bit more backwards instead of down and instead of down and forwards, you you point you kind of do more of a, a stroke where you're. I hope you know what I'm saying. But if you're doing that, uh, it's going to cut a little bit smoother for you than uh, something with a flat blade on the bottom would do. So instead of you having to dictate the curvature of that blade to really make feather sticking and things like that easy. Uh, this way kind of automatically does it for you because of the way that it's upswept. So along that same lines, a uh, little bit smaller of a design, uh, this is the Shogun. So as you can see, same general shape. Uh, this one is a little less nest monkey on, on the end um, and a little bit more of a almost a curved Warncliffe style. 
but you can still tell everything is that upswept uh, design on there. Uh, looking for the exact specs here so I can give you the blade length because uh, I don't want to do it off the top of my head. So uh, three and five eighths inch on the blade. Uh, so this is about three eighths inch shorter on the blade uh, than its big brother. Um, seven and seven eighths inch overall, so just under eight inches overall. It's eighth inch A2. This one's skeletonized full tang and it's turquoise burlap, natural liners, white pinstripes. So this is probably my favorite size of the group just because this is tends to be the kind of the, the size that I typically carry personally. Um, but I'm not outdoors a ton, not as much as I would love to be. I'm usually here on a computer talking to you fine folks and doing things like this. So uh, for daily activity, daily life, this one's pretty fantastic. Um, however, if you like a smaller EDC or you work in a place where you're worried about people thinking you're a murderer or a killer just because you pull out an object that's not a box cutter uh, to do something, uh, you guys are laughing probably, but uh, there are people we have contact us that have to worry about that. They can only carry, you know, certain size blades uh, for work and that kind of thing, or they work in an environment where they have to really be careful with that. So uh, there's a smaller version. Uh, this one's going to be awesome for pocket carry in a sheath. Uh, this one is called the Daimyo. Uh, it's kind of like uh, kind of like Charlton Heston at the end of Planet of the Apes. Damn you! It's kind of you pronounce it kind of like that. It's it's actually pronounced similar to that. So uh, we won't mind if you say damn you. Uh, hope your kids aren't watching. Not PG. Uh, this is what I get for doing things live. So this one has got a uh, 2 and 5 eighths inch blade. And it's about 5 and 3 eighths inch overall. So good small blade as you can tell there. Uh, when you're holding it, typically it's about a three finger grip. Uh, where your fourth pinky finger really fits really nicely uh, behind the pommel. So it feels very natural to hold it. Gives you a nice stopping point. It's got a decent little finger guard on there, so you're never going to run up on the blade. Um, like I said, the indexing is good, so you always know where this is at. So if you need a nice, really super small slicer, uh, this is maybe your next pocket knife for sure. Uh, getting a nice pocket sheet to go with it. It's 8th inch A2. Skeletonized full tang on this. This is emerald jute burlap black liners with those awesome popping lime pinstripes. So we got two of those this week. Uh, the other one that we have, the other daimyo, is uh, Bacote, uh, as you see there. Black liners, white pinstripes. Uh, again, an eighth inch A2, skeletonized full tang as well. Um, these are a good budget model, so they fall in line. Um, actually, I think they're a tad less than what the Runt usually runs uh, price-wise. So they're a really good, super-duper super good price. Um, just a really great little everyday utility uh, slicing blade right there. So that's the other Daimyo and Bacote, as you can see there. Uh, the way the pommel shape is, your fingers sneak behind it really nicely, giving it a lot bigger feel than what you actually get uh, for such a small knife. Uh, so absolutely fantastic. Um, now another one along the lines of the Japanese naming sequence uh, that we have is one that you've seen. I think we've only posted out one of these so far. So this is the Geisha. Now I know that's another Japanese name. They're not meant to be in line uh, with the ones that you just saw. Uh, the name of this actually came about more because it looks like uh, the foot of a geisha where they used to stuff their feet in tiny little shoes because they thought that was an attractive trait to have tiny feet uh, and their feet would get all deformed and it would be a little bit more that shape. But this was actually based on a uh, French foot knife. So Japanese name, French inspiration. There you go. Um, but this is the geisha. Uh, this is that uh, freckled bone linen uh, that you've seen quite a bit from us lately that's awesome. It's got a lot of, lot of super good character on it. Um, it's not a, you know bleached out material before it's done, so you get that nice freckled natural uh, highlights in it. And it's got natural bolsters, natural liners. Uh, the blade on this one's about two and a quarter, so it's a little bit shorter uh, than the Daimyo was. Uh, five inches overall. This one's eighth inch, A2. Um, this one has a taper tang though, so uh, nice little accents with the bolsters and the taper tang on that. Um, 
the Geisha is a winner in my book. I really like it. One thing I like is because of uh, that that over exaggerated pommel. You actually, when you have this on a pocket sheath. Uh, it's really easy to get in and out of the pocket sheath. You know, it, it's really easy to grab uh, and pull out, which can be a problem on some of the smaller knives that you use in uh, leather pocket sheaths. So that's one one upvote for me uh, as far as the geisha is concerned. Uh, moving right along into a model that you have seen a couple of roll out so far. This is the Femme Fatale. Um, very sexy, very stabby by design, obviously. Uh, this is not uh, your bushcraft knife. So what it looks like it's it's for, uh, to be sexy and slicey, that, that's what it's for. So let me look up the exact specs on this. I'll give you uh, exact, there we go. All right, blade length is about three and a half inches on the blade, seven and a half inches overall. Now these start out with a thicker stock um, so that they can get that really nice, sexy, uh, taper on them as they're ground. So they start out as 5 30 seconds uh, inch stock, but you can tell this is taper tang. Um, it's also got that, that long grind on it where it gets real super thin down at the edge, down at the tip. Um, just a, he, Andy knocks these out of the park. These are just done so super well. Uh, so it's a black canvas back there on the pommel end. It's a, actually Bacote on the bolsters, but it's almost a burl kind of look, it doesn't look a lot like Bacote. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, it has a ton of character in the bolster, uh, which is nice because this in a sheath uh, is gonna cover up that. Uh, so it's gonna be nice, sleek, uh, you know, not stand out quite as much uh, with the black coming out. But as soon as you pull it out, you get to appreciate the, the beauty on the bolster. So really nice job on that. And we have another one of these. This one, as you notice, does not have the swedge at the top. It only has the bottom grind. Uh, which is awesome, but we also do have one with the swedge on it this week. So um, this one's an absolute knockout. Just so you know, the swedge on the top uh, is for aesthetics and to reduce drag when you're cutting through something. Uh, it is not fully sharpened on the top, so you don't have to worry about cutting your finger on the top. You only got one dangerous side to worry about and, of course, that super stabby pointy tip. So. Um, again, I think this one is 5.30 seconds as well. Let me look real quick. Um, I can tell you the bolster is the Starry Night, Starry Night Burlap, uh, which is a crowd favorite for great reason. It's super sexy. Uh, it actually does have a couple of the glow-in-the-dark flex in this, but because it's such a small piece, it doesn't have a lot of it in that. Um, just enough to make it really interesting. Um, Cross-cut micarta on the pommel end of things. Um, natural liners as well, um, three and a half inch blade, seven and a half inches overall, like I said before. This one is also 5.30 seconds, A2, um, obviously with a tapered tang. It doesn't get much sexier, for sure. Um, Andy wanted something really super sexy, or really, really kind of that, that real stabby, lethal looking um, knife and he's just knocked it out of the park this one especially that color combo is not one i would have personally thought of but it, it works wonderfully it's perfect so that's the other femme fatale and moving on to another set of awesome is the gunstock bushcrafters now that's named that because the handle shape is reminiscent of a uh the buttstock on a rifle so very in very indented one cool thing about this, I don't actually show it uh, in the video, but if you're holding it back uh, on the pommel, that shape actually makes this a pretty good little chopper. It's not really designed specifically to be a chopper, but if you need to do some, some light chopping, um, it's really good for that. It has a lot of nice movement and really locks into your fingers right there as well. Um, you can tell with the, the, the pommel flares out. I can't tell you how good this thing feels in the hand. It's not one that you look at and go, wow, that's going to feel real great in my hand because it looks like it's, uh, you know, a little awkward. Like, how does it fit in, in you know, in your palm swell and that kind of thing? But um, it, it just works. It, it just absolutely works. Um, it's one of those things that uh, you, you see it and you're like, eh, that may work. You pick it up and you're like, wow, that's Andy knocked that out of the park. I mean, he's got... 10 years in the business of being one of the most renowned handle shapers out there um, for good reason. He knows what he's doing with it. It feels great. Um, so this one is black canvas micarta on the pommel end. 
And again, I'm having to scroll through quite a few to get my specs, so bear with me just one sec. Okay, so blue honeycomb is what we're calling the bolster material. I did not check if this is the one that glows in the dark or not. Um, so if you got a question about that, if you're curious about this model uh, and you may pick it up, uh, shoot us an email, support at fiddlebackforge.com, um, or reply to this, this uh, wherever you're watching the video, um, and we'll try to answer that, and I'll try to get that answer. Uh, it may be one that glows where the honeycomb portion actually glows in the dark. I'm not sure, but I'm not sure that it's not, because uh, we have had a few that do. Not all of them do, though. Um, so blade on this one is about four and three eighths, so it's a little bit larger than the normal four inch bushcraft knife. Uh, nine, nine and a quarter inch overall. Cool thing about this one is because the handle shape, if you've got really big hands, bigger than mine, mine's large, extra large, um, this is still going to be very comfortable for you. However, if you have smaller hands, because of the handle shape, the way it's kind of broken up, you'll find spots on there where it feels perfect for you as well. So really great design overall uh, as far as that goes. So 8th inch A2 on this one, taper tang, of course. And we do have another one if synthetics are not your, your cup of tea and you'd rather keep it au naturel, then we got one in Bacote, which is always popular because it's gorgeous. So this one also has the mosaic pin on it, um, which is a, which is it's, it's just beautiful. So black liners, lime pin stripes on this one, uh, taper tang as you can see there. Um, so again, this is called the Gunstock Bushcraft. So if you're looking it up on the site, um, anything on our website, you can actually there's a little magnifying glass up in the top of the menu. That's the search function. Um, you can always press that and just type in whatever you're searching for, and it'll narrow it down on the site for you. It'll show you any. Fiddleback Friday articles, it'll show you available knives, it'll show you all that stuff. So if you're looking for a particular model, uh, you can just go and search for Gunstock and it'll pop up. Now this one goes live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight, as all of these do. Um, so that is the Gunstock Bushcrafter, as you can see in various grips. It just feels right. It feels good. I like this, I like this model a lot. Um, another one that we've got coming up that's new, we've only released, I think, two other ones of this one as well. This is the CX Tasker, so it's a kind of a CX style blade, even though it doesn't have the the sharp drop off at the end, almost a um, almost a forty five degree chisel point is what you see most CXs. Um, it wasn't really designed to follow the CX model very closely. Um, it's just made to be um, almost kind of a larger Puko style, no finger guard. Um, you know, almost a Warncliffe style blade where most of the blade is down at the bottom where it doesn't have a whole lot of belly. Um, just for really getting those camp tasks done. It's comfortable no matter how you hold it. It's got a very neutral grip on it. Um, it's got enough indexing to let you know where it always is, which is great not having the finger guard to have that much indexing. Um, but it's neutral enough that you can hold it in all different variety of grips uh, and you don't create hot spots and it feels good in your hand. So uh, that one is Teal Micarta. Uh, let me check and see if we've got any other name for it. I don't think we do. Again, you can go to the site also to check out any of the specs that you want to see. Uh, but these are 3 and 7 eighths inch blade, 8 and a half inches overall. 8 inch A2 on this one in particular, tapered tang. And uh, it is teal micarta with thick natural liners on it. So most of the time when you see these, um, when we use the thick thick natural liners, usually it's with a natural bolster as well. Uh, but this one isn't. And sometimes, you'll, most of the time, you'll see a thinner liner uh, with an accent color. So this one's pretty special in that it only has the, the single thicker liner on there. I think for this one, it was the right choice. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, but we do have two of these as well this week. Uh, so the second one is this one right here, as you guessed, maybe we got it in Bacote, Um, because again, it's awesome. Bacote's is fantastic. We got a batch of it in, so uh, we've been using it and couldn't be happier with how these are turning out. They're absolutely amazing. So black liners, yellow pinstripes on this, taper tang as well. I'm going to look that up, but that looks like eighth inch to me as well. Uh, but I do want to be sure. I don't want to mislead you. Uh, let's see. You can just ogle it while I'm looking for specs here. Yep, eighth inch A2 on that as well. And like I said, it is taper tang. 
So that is the other CX tasker. Uh, and CX is S E A X if you're wanting to do a search on the site for it uh, later on after this video is released. So getting back to traditional, we do have a few of those as well. So not all the ones this week are brand new models. Uh, some, are, some are good uh, throwbacks to the classics. And it doesn't get more classic or classy than the hiking buddy with a high grind with that paper micarta. Ivory paper micarta. It is gorgeous. So if you want something to carry around every day and you want you want something that's going to make you smile every time you take it out to use it doing no matter what you're doing uh, during the day, um, it's going to be this hiking buddy. It's super nice and super classy. Natural liners on that. I um, believe the pinstripes on that one are blue. Yep, blue on that. So three and a quarter inch blade. Um, the Hiking Buddy is actually my favorite model to carry every day. Um, it's the one I have on me most days. Mine isn't even as classy as this one. Um, I really like this model. Um, it's not as super lightweight as the black canvas one we had last week, but this one is only a little bit heavier than that um, because that paper in my card is very dense. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. So natural liners, blue pinstripes. I can't say enough about how nice this is and how nice it is in hand and that high grind <sighs> sexy all right so we're gonna move on i don't want to but uh we're going to that's the bell of the ball actually there's two that i really really love i'll show you the next one um so this is the handyman which is a quintessential favorite of fiddleback forge fans of course if you own fiddleback forge knives um and you don't have a handyman yet you're missing out because it's uh it's it's a mainstay you got to have one if you've got a bunch of fiddlebacks already, you have to have a handyman. It's almost a rule. It's not really a rule, but it could be a rule. I think we need to make it a rule. Allison, yeah. it's a rule? Yeah. Allison said yeah. it's a rule. All right. So this is a Zeracote, I believe is how you pronounce it. Some of you will tell me I'm wrong. Don't care. It might be Zeracote, Zeric, I don't know. Anyway, Allison doesn't know either. So black liners, line pen stripes. Uh, the handyman has a three and three eighths inch blade. It's seven and five eighths inches overall. Fantastic combination. There's very little finger guard, but a lot of nice indexing. So if you really like to do uh, intricate wood carving and things like that, it's a it's a great model for that. You really like it. Um, can't say enough about this model. Um, it's a really great all around knife, especially in that size range. Um, does big boy task in a small package. That's all I can say. So, eighth inch A2, skeletonized full tang on this one, that beautiful mosaic beauty mark that we put on there. Um, again, Handyman and Zeracote. Awesome. So, the next one I really like this week is a knife that's really grown on me personally. It's the CR1. CR stands for Carl Rex Steiner, which was the the knife maker who inspired uh, the design uh, based on one of those that he had made. Um, now again, if you haven't seen any of our videos in the past where we talk about this particular model, um, the CR1 is made where that, that hump on the palm swell is your, finger, your three fingers are not meant to go in front of that. Your ring finger is actually meant to go on that hump for control. Then your pinky locks in to that swell right at the pommel back there and you are locked in with this knife. So uh, if you told me that you had to have a great all-around hunting companion of a knife, I would steer you this way. So this is becoming a favorite of mine. This one in particular I really love uh, because of the way, this is going to be silly, but it's the way that the liners turned out. So there's nothing super fancy about this knife. It's just super clean, super classy. Uh, and the way that the liner, the natural liner turned out on it, uh, I'll let, actually let it loop through again um, so you can see it when I turn it. But pay attention to the uh, zigzag line of the, of the canvas inside the micarta. You'll notice that there is a little crisscross line that goes perfectly down the center like it was laid there. Um, there's something about that color pop right there against those white liners and that teal, that teal micarta. It just really, for me... It, this is super classy. That is just such a beautiful knife. It accents the shape super well uh, of that design. It's, I don't, 
you know, I can't put into words really why, but this is probably one of my favorite ones of the CR ones that have come out. So I uh, really like this one. You can see that third finger on the hump there for control. It does work, I swear to you. Uh, it feels good in the hand, much better than you would think that it is. Um, it's just a fantastic knife, fantastic design. Andy knocked it out of the park. So next up on the uh, traditional list, so this is the baby boot. This was based on the bush boot. Uh, which is a super popular model. Uh, the baby boot, as you can tell, is a smaller version. Um, there's a lot of people that really like this model the best for uh, everyday carry in the pocket and a pocket sheath, and for good reason. It's just a great knife all around. Uh, so the blade length on it is about two and a half inches. Uh, it's five and three quarters inch overall. Um, so it's it's big enough to get most of the things done during the day that you encounter in everyday life uh, but not large enough where it's scary to anybody when you take it out so this raspberry micarta uh, black liners white pinstripes uh, this one's got a little bit different in pin pattern as you can tell with the single pin up front um, keeps it really simple really classy the way that it fits in your hand that you, your fourth finger really locks behind the pommel you can see the balance point there um, just a really cool little knife for everyday carry so that one's that and to finish things out last but definitely not least is mr joey berry from jb knife works this knife is a one-off uh he has told us that he is not going to make another one uh there was two originally in the works one did not make it so we'll leave it at that one did not make it so this is the only one uh, that he is going to make of this model. He really likes it, really enjoy it. It's just really hard to make this model. So um, this one, uh, I believe he's calling it uh, Limeade, I think is what he's calling the handle material. It's very similar to the Raspberry uh, Micarta that we use over on the Fiddleback Forge side. Um, but with those liners, obviously, Cherry Limeade. I knew I was going to mess that up. So Cherry Limeade, uh, we're calling this model the Patriarch. Uh, to me, it very much reminds reminds me of something that uh, my grandfather would want to carry, or my dad would want to carry, uh, with a with a with a slimmer blade, with a nice, good size working handle on it. Um, don't really know why it reminds me of that, but it really does. Um, so I think the name is very fitting uh, for this model. So, uh, like I said, cherry limeade on the scales, uh, natural liners, lime pinstripes. Uh, the blade on it is three and a quarter inches. So it's a nice working size, about, about the size of a hiking buddy blade, if you're familiar with the Fiddleback Forge side. Uh, seven and a half inches overall. And the steel on this is AEBL. So if you're wanting a stainless variant uh, for an everyday carry knife, this one is going to be a good option for you. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, the price is good on this one as well. So really awesome little knife. I dig it a lot. Um, I think you will too. I think that's... Uh, that's pretty much all we've got for today. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit us up uh, in the comments wherever you are watching this or send us an email to support at fiddlebackforge.com. Uh, do keep in mind, we're a small company. We do have families. So I know these knives come out at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we do our best to answer all the questions before the knives go live and between the time you see this and the time they go live. Um, but we're not always available, so uh, I'll try to answer any questions I can, the best I can. Um, and, you know, we'll leave the rest up to you as well. But we're going to see you next week. Remember, these knives do go up at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight on their website, fiddlebackforge.com. And I'm Robert, and we'll see you next week. And remember, life's too short to carry an ugly knife. And why don't we take it out of here and watch some, uh, some behind-the-scenes footage on how these things are made, in case you haven't seen it. So here's the shop video rolling out.